Happy New Year quilt friends and welcome back to the Rose Garden Sew Along. I'm your host Heather Peterson and we are making the Midnight Rose Garden quilt or the Rose Garden Runners in this sew along. This is week two. If you missed week one, it was back in November where we did all of our cutting for our project. So hopefully you are all cut and ready to go and start with this next week. Um, this is a copy of our schedule. So in case you miss it, I will hold really still so you can screenshot our schedule. This week we are going to be working on making these cute little flower blocks. Now, if you're doing the table runner, you're gonna make just four of these. And if you're doing the big, big quilt, you're gonna make 15 of these blocks. So this week, I'm gonna go over lots of tips and techniques for doing the folded corners. And I've gotten quite a few emails from beginners who are asking if I will go over more detailed instructions on that part. And since folded corners are such a basic part of this particular pattern and just quilting in general, I'm gonna give you three or four different methods for doing those folded corners and then you can pick which one you like best. And I'm also gonna give as many tips as I can on improving your accuracy on those. So for some of you who are experts, you probably already had this method figured out, but I'm gonna take the time in this first video to go over all of that for those that are beginners. So stay tuned for our next clip and we're gonna go, we're gonna dive deep into folded corners. Okay, I've got my little workstation set up and we're ready to go here. You're gonna to wanna to grab your pattern where we're gonna be going over steps one through three. And in those instructions, I refer back to the general instructions so you can find those on page one. And in the general instructions, there's a small little section on doing those folded corners. So you can refer back to that as needed. But I'm gonna go over some methods that um, aren't included in the pattern, and then I'll talk about what my favorite method is for doing these folded corners. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your teal squares and your one and an eighth inch squares. Now there are some one and a quarter inch squares too, and you're gonna want to make sure that you have the correct one. And I'm double checking here, and I have my one and an eighth inch squares. So when I talk about folded corners, what I mean is I'm gonna take this square, lay it on top of a bigger square and I'm gonna sew from corner to corner so that I can flip this over and it makes this little angled piece. Now my favorite method for doing that is just to draw lines. So you can see here I have those lines drawn. And the reason I like to draw the lines is I think it helps with my accuracy to see a line that I can you know, aim for when I'm sewing. And the first step for improving your accuracy when you're drawing that line is to for sure have a fine tip pen. So this is called a friction clicker and it is erasable and it does have a fine tip. So if you start off right away with using something with a wide um, line, that's gonna throw off your stitching right away. And when you're using these tiny squares like this, you know, you can't really afford to be off by a thread or two without it imp uh, affecting your accuracy. So I like these for that reason, and I have just a little tiny ruler here where I can sit and draw those lines. I often do this at night um, if there's TV on or if I'm sitting in school pickup line and get all those lines drawn. Now, one of the other reasons I like this pen is that it's erasable, I mentioned. So if you take your iron, which I have handy here, and you iron that, that line automatically disappears. So you never have to worry about it showing up or appearing in your quilt again, or like if you use a ballpoint pen that can bleed. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I love this pen for drawing those lines. So after you draw the line, then you're going to sew on the line and I've already pressed this, but um, you know what, let's, Let's draw a line on there again, because I, like I said, I already did my pressing, so it's hard to see where my line would have been. But when I do this, again, to improve my accuracy, do you see how my line is just on the inside of that sewing? And what that does is it allows for the turn of the fabric so that when this flips over, this doesn't end up short along those edges. So by sewing just barely to the outside edge, that will allow for the turn of the fabric and will help you be more accurate. So that's another thing that I do to help improve the accuracy when I draw those lines. So that does take time and I know some people hate doing that. So then I'm gonna show you a few methods where you don't have to draw those lines. Um, the first one is uh, marking your machine. So this is a tool called Clearly Perfect Angles and it has this cling thing that goes on the bed of your machine. And then as you're sewing, 
you line up your needle with the tip of the square and then you line up the point of this square with that middle line and as you're sewing you just follow the tip of the square along that line and it'll sew on it for you. Um, this is an older cling thing so it no longer sticks to my machine very well but there are other products like that that you can use to mark your machine. Um, I guess my favorite one right now is this um, diagonal seam tape it's called by Cluck Cluck Sew. And this tapes down on the bed of your machine. The red line is going to line up with your needle. She has videos on her website of how you line this up to get it done accurately. And again, as you're sewing, the tip of this little square is going to be aligned with the red line in the middle. And you just follow it up. And I will show another video where I'm sitting at my machine doing that so you can see that. So those methods will draw the line for you. Um, if you don't want to draw any lines at all, you can also use this ruler called the Creative Grids Folded Corner Clipper. And do you see this diagonal line here on the ruler? You're going to line that up with the points on the little square. And I use a small little rotary cutter to do this trimming. And then you're just going to cut that square off. And then, you know, this line wouldn't be here. So you'll have to imagine that's gone. But you're going to use the outside edge of this and line it up with the outside edge of your foot and do your sewing. And that way your trimming and everything is all done for you. So I, I like that method for small squares like this, but for larger squares, like in some of the other steps for this pattern, you get a really long bias edge and then that can stretch out and get distorted. So I don't like it as well for that. And so sometimes you need to assess your project and figure out you know, which method works best for each project. And I have my iPad handy here. Hold on one second. I got to log in. <laughs> so if you go to my YouTube channel here and you find this video here called tips, didn't mean to actually touch that, tips for getting perfect Are folded corners, that will walk you through um, a, some of my reasoning on why I do different methods at different times. And it also just has a ton of tips for doing folded corners. So you can refer back to that if you want to see a little bit more on that. Okay, so those are our three methods. So what you're going to do is go over to your machine with all your teal squares and all your little one and an eighth inch squares, and you're going to sew your folded corners to the block. So you're going to have one on each side like this. And this is also a good check for knowing that you have the right size square because they're going to meet at the top, but they're not going to overlap. Um, I mentioned we have a bunch of one and a quarter inch navy squares. If you try to lay that second one on here, it would actually overlap by a quarter of an inch and you would get kind of a folded or a flying goose block top on there where those two intersect and the line would come down or the point would be a quarter of an inch down if that makes sense so on our block we want those to meet so after our block is sewn and pressed they look like this and then once you sew your next seam allowance that's going to round that little tip and turn that into a flower so let's go over to the machine now and i'll show you sewing those i'll, I'll show i'll demonstrate sewing those different methods Okay, so I'm all set up at my machine and I'm ready just to demonstrate for you how I do these folded corners at the machine. So the first method I'm gonna talk about is using my pen to draw the line and my little ruler. So I've got this line drawn ready to go and then I'm gonna get that corner perfectly placed and I'm just going to stitch on just the very outside edge of the line. Now, because these squares are small, the machine has a tendency to want to eat the corner if you sew directly onto your machine or onto that block. So sometimes I will start out with a bunny tail. I shouldn't say sometimes. I pretty much use those little bunny tails all the time. But it's just a little fabric scrap like that that you sew on and off of if you need to so that the machine doesn't eat the edge of your block. So as you can see, I've sewn just on the outside edge of that square and you can flip it over and see that it meets those corners. So our next method is to mark your machine. Now I mentioned to you my favorite method is this diagonal seam tape from Cluck Cluck Sew. So I have a piece of that stuck on my machine. You need to make sure that it's perfectly lined up and then you're just going to take your block, lay them right sides together and you're gonna start out by sewing just onto the tip of the corner 
Do a few stitches and stop and then look down and make sure that the tip of the square is perfectly lined up with the red line and then just keep that square lined up as you sew. Now your machine may end a little short here like mine does and I have to eyeball that last little bit. But if you're working with a bigger square, you should be able to have a big piece of tape here and keep that lined up the whole way. So like I said, that will draw the line for you. The other method I'm gonna show you is if you use the folded corner clipper, like I did here to trim this so it's ready to go. Now this is a t an even smaller square now that we've trimmed it and so it is sometimes hard to keep that perfectly placed. So this is one example where I used that glue, the seam align glue, and I have another brand of glue because when I, I wanted to show you, because when I went back and looked at the video where I demonstrated, I felt like you couldn't even see where the glue was. So this is white glue, so you'll be able to see how I've got that stuck on the corners there. And then you would line it up and let the glue dry with that perfectly lined up in the corners like so. So that is what I've done on this piece. It is glued in place and it's ready to go. Now, if you could imagine trying to pin those corners, these little tiny bias edges, it's really hard to do. And that's where that glue comes in, especially handy if you're having trouble keeping those lined up. So then we're just gonna keep our foot along the edge of the diagonal line that we just cut there. I'm gonna sew onto my bunny tail and then I'm gonna trim these off. And you can see that no matter what method I've used, here's the first one with the line drawn, all of those achieve the same results with the line that um, flips over like that. So you can go through and see which one is the most accurate for you and which method you like doing best and then continue on making all the rest of your squares using that method. Okay, now we're taking our squares over to the ironing board and we're ready to do our pressing. Now, the first thing I always do is just set my iron down on top and kind of secure those together and flatten everything out. Because if this isn't laying totally flat, it makes it a little hard to press those pieces accurately. So we're gonna set that seam by doing that. And then what you're gonna do is take the edge of your iron and then just push gently over. And I usually give a little shot of steam. I like things to lay nice and flat. And if you notice, I'm not just pushing really hard, you know, and, and swooping in with my iron and distorting things. I'm just very gently using that edge and I'm making sure that there isn't any excess fabric hiding in here because that will throw those folded corners off. Now, because those corners are so little, they don't like to lay down very well. So sometimes I will use my clapper and just let that rest on there to flatten that seam. And if you're not familiar with a clapper, Riley Blake that makes this clapper, and that's the fabric company that I designed for, they have a whole video on why they use the, the clapper and how to use it and what it's made out of and why it works. So you can check that out if you want to. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about the bulk that's behind here, because um, we're gonna wanna trim this seam so that it looks like this. We have a quarter of an inch beyond our seam. And you can choose to do that before you iron or after. Now, sometimes I like to leave them in and press first because look at from the backside, I can see here that I was not very accurate with my sewing. So do you see how the navy is hanging out from the edge? And if I had trimmed this first, I wouldn't be able to see that. So if you're struggling with accuracy, you might wanna leave those in when you do that first press, just so you can see if you're being accurate or not. So like this one, I can see that I'm pretty accurate with that. But this other corner, I can see that there's excess out to the edge. And if I look close at my block, I can see here's the reason why. So when I sewed, I didn't start perfectly on the corner like I should have. And that throws excess fabric, you know, after you do the fold, excess fabric to the top, and you can see that that's where I'm off. And I wouldn't know if I was off if I had trimmed those corners. So you can decide how you want to proceed with that, but sometimes I leave those in just so I can see if I'm being accurate or not with that step. So that's what we're going to do is you're going to make a whole bunch of those teal squares like that. And then we are going to switch over to doing our green for the little leaf piece here. So again, we have our, our little bit larger square. So these are one and a quarter. You can double check. Then you can 
lay them on opposite sides of the block and you're gonna sew on that drawn line again or use one of the other methods that I men mentioned to sew those pieces to the square and then you're gonna get a bunch of blocks like this. So you'll need four teals for each block and two greens for each block. So one thing I wanna mention at this point is if you are having trouble with managing those little squares, let's say for example, you're having trouble keeping them lined up or let's just say your machine does this, which my machine did on this one where the quarter of the foot grabbed that and flipped it over and now I have to rip this apart and you know start over again. So if you're having trouble keeping that positioned, you can use um, a seam glue if you want to. This one is called Seam Align Fabric Glue from Acorn Precision Piecing Products. And what that does, let me find a little square that I haven't already sewn. What you would do with that is you're gonna put, let's just start from here. We're gonna put a little dot of glue on each corner then you're gonna position it perfectly on your block. And I put the glue towards those outer corners so they couldn't flip. And then you either need to let that glue dry or you use your iron to dry it. So if you just set your iron on there for a couple seconds, that will heat set that glue so that it is stuck down there and it can't move. And that way when you get to your machine, it's gonna stay perfectly aligned and not scooch around on you. And your machine is gonna have a harder time flipping those edges like it did here. So that might be something that you wanna try. So um, in our next clip, we're gonna sew our block together. So I'm gonna switch my workstation here and get those other pieces set out. One quick thing that I forgot to mention on this method of doing the folded corners where I leave the fabric inside until I know if I'm being accurate. You know, when you see that little excess hanging off of there, you can either trim that off with a scissor to stay accurate, or often I will just keep a small rotary mat and a ruler at my ironing board so that I can do my trimming here before I go any further in my process and know that you know any block now that I take to the machine is already trimmed and proofed and is the accurate size because I do that as I'm pressing and as I'm seeing each one that might be off just a little bit. So I just quick wanted to mention that before I go on to the next part of sewing. All right, now I've got my pieces laid out to make one complete block here. And you can see I have four of the teals and two of the greens. So keep that in mind. It's very easy to want to sew uh, greens in these corners as well, but they are making a diagonal line through the block. So you only need two of those. And you can have your yellow center and your background fabric in the opposite corners. So in this block, I have a cream background. This one, I have a navy background and depending on which kit you are using and whatnot for your pattern, that might look differently. But I'm making my big sample to match this quilt, and this is a block for one of the table runner versions that I'm making. So what you're gonna wanna do next is you're gonna sew these pieces together into rows. And I just wanna point out that this teal block used the one and an eighth inch corner, and the green block used the one and a quarter inch cut square. So those should be off by an eighth of an inch. And I did that purposefully so that each time you sew this, you don't have to line up those diagonal seams every single time. So they should look off like this just a little bit. Okay, so then let's go back to talking about this. You're gonna sew these into rows of three, like so. Now I have done that with this block and I just wanted to point out that if you're doing the big quilt, some of your teals and greens are going to be scrappy. So I kept all my teals in the block the same and I kept my greens the same. And sometimes it can be hard to keep track of so many pieces uh, to get those planned scrappy blocks um, all together correctly. So what I did is after I sewed this seam, I just chain pieced right onto the next one and I did not clip the threads in between like this. And then I sewed onto the next one and didn't clip those threads. And then I came back and did the same on the other side. So all of my pieces for each block are nicely together. And then I'm ready to go to the machine and sew this next seam together. Now these seams should be pressed in opposite directions. If you notice, there's little black pressing arrows in the pattern. I'll just point that out here quick. See those little tiny black arrows? Those are the pressing arrows for getting that together and having that nest. And um, you're just gonna sew from one edge to the next on the block, and then you're gonna repeat on the opposite side. 
so that you have your block sewn together like this. So there from the back, you can see these seams are opposite directions. And then these two seams I just pressed out. You could press those open if you wanted to as well. But um, once that's all pressed, that block should measure five and three quarter inches. So I will give you proof sizes throughout the pattern because I want to make sure that this is the right size before going on. And if your block is off, you're going to want to look at your seam allowance, maybe look at your pressing, make sure you don't have anything hidden in those seams so that you have an accurate block going forward. Okay, that's it for week two, where we've made all of our little teal flower blocks. Again, if you're making the runner, you want to make four. If you're making the big quilt, you want to make 15. Now, I hope you'll join us next week where we get to make our big rose block. So I'm going to teach you the partial seam technique and we're going to work a little bit more on folded corners because you can see we've got a few of those on our block here. So um, I hope you will join us again next week and if you are trying to remember how the sew along works or if you're new and you haven't heard the details, if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel you will get a notification next week when that video is posted or if you want to email me at heather at ancustreasures.com. I will put you on the email list for the sew along and that way you will get emails every week with a link to the video in it so that you can uh, work on your blocks for that week as you follow along in the video. So if you're not following this video in the time uh, of when the videos are made, I will put them all together in a playlist and they can be viewed at any time under the Rose Garden sew along. So that's it for this week. We'll see you again next Thursday.